Welcome to Decades. My name is Chris Rubio. I'm going to be the host of this fantastic new show on NGBN.TV. You are in for a treat. We came up with the show because the world has become just too divided. You're either left, you're right, you're blue, you're red, you're up, you're down, you're black, you're white, and no one can seem to even agree, let alone talk to one another. So we came up with this fantastic new show called Decades. It's going to be with people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, all men, and we're going to bring up topics that normally you would shy away from. You just think to yourself, yeah, let's talk. Nah, I don't want to talk about that because it's going to cause a fight. We're going to go head first into that. As I said, my name is Chris Rubio. This is Decades on NGBN.TV, and I'm going to welcome our guest host, or not our guest host, our co-host, Ed McAndrew, not McAndrews. Ed, what's up, my man? Hello, Rubio. Hey, it's great to be here. I am so excited about this. You and I have been talking about this for the longest time. I am really pumped that we're finally here. It's been a long time in the making. And, you know, we have an awesome panel for for this first episode that I think everybody's going to really have fun with. Re representing our 60-year-old group, he resides in Tampa, Florida. The man is an entrepreneur and an innovator, innovator of wearable tech. We're talking about Mr. Bill Geyser. Gentlemen, Ed, Rubio, glad to be here. Welcome to the show, Bill. Thank you. Glad to have you. Our next guy, he's representing our 50-year-olds there, Rubio. He's from the great state of Washington, cybersecurity consultant and outdoor enthusiast. Give it up for Jim Gingrich. Jim, Good evening. To the show, man. Good to see you guys. All right. Coming up, representing our 40s as towards the later end of 40s, as he would have you have to tell you. Uh, he's from the greater LA area. He's an educator. He's a coach. He's a youth, he's a youth pastor. He's got two kids. Give it up for Anthony AC Cobb. Welcome to the show, AC. Hey, thanks for having me, you jive turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> next, on, next coming to our show, representing the lower half of the 40s. He's also, he's also from the L.A. area, born and raised. He's an educator. He's also graduated from UCLA as a two-sports star. Give it up for our main man, Jimmy McElroy, a.k.a. Jimmy Mac. What up, Liz? Welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks As for we having me. Getting, getting down to our younger younger group, we've got a guy out of the great, the great city of Philadelphia. He's got an entrepreneurial spirit, and he's got a lot of community involvement. Give it up for Mr. Joe Nolan. What's up, Jabronis? Thanks for having me. <laughs> Last but not least, representing our 20-year-olds, He's a student at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. He's playing football, student athlete. Give it up for Cruz Rubio. Howdy. Rubio, there's our panel for this great show. I'm, good let's get it started. Panel. This is a good looking panel, as you can tell. We've already obviously have men from their 20s through the 60s. We're representing the left, the right, the black, the white, the brown, the yellow. We're all over the damn place. We're definitely not going to be agreeing on everything but that's okay this is one of those shows well, i don't even know if there's one of those shows. This is the show. we're going to agree to disagree and at the end we're all going to come together have a virtual hug have a drink do what we got to do but just teach people how to learn how to talk to people that you don't necessarily agree with this is about our 10th or 12th trial run of this show we've already had trial runs now this is the real thing so here we go ed what is our first topic my man our first topic Coming out of the gate for this episode is, is, it is, topic for tonight, is the news broken? What do we think? All right. Is the news broken? I'm going to start us off because I'm the host and I'm here. So let's do this. I think in the past you've always known that, let's just say the last five to ten years, maybe even longer. I haven't really been watching the news that long. But you always knew there was the CNN, and that was your left. It was just a given. And then you had your Fox. That was your right. That was just a given. And then you had, kind of just had your NBC, ABC, CBS. What else? And you just thought, okay, that's kind of the middle of the road. But as Twitter has exploded 
and social media has exploded, everyone's been able to kind of pull back the curtain and see the wizard before the end of the movie, The Wizard of Oz, and say, wait a second, that, that, that's how the hot dog is made? This isn't right. we got to understand what's happening here. So in my opinion, is the news broken? I, I would say 100%. And I, I don't know if there's a way to come back from it. Uh, and go to number one, my Axios poll. This is a, a poll that sh shows the trust of the news has collapsed from 50% to 11% for TV and 30% to 16% for the newspaper since 1995. That is astonishing. That is not a good look. And if I was a newscaster or running the news or, or, or news organization, you'd have to think, okay, this is not good, but then you think to yourself, do they care? That's my thought. So I'm going to go to Bill. Bill, do they care? Absolutely not. Um, I don't know what poll you were looking at. I read something. It was uh, published last week by Gallup and Knight Ritter. And one of the headlines out of it is that trust in media is so low that 50% of Americans now believe that news organizations deliberately mislead us. Deliberate. So is it broken? It's broken big time. I mean, I think you ask another question, which we'll get to, which is, can it be fixed? AC, is it broken? It can't be fixed. Heck no, man. It's a wrap. People have their their positions and there's money to be made. There are, uh, you know, you have to stand for what you've been talking about for years to come. And you have your CNN, like you said, your Fox News. You have those in the middle. People like me, skeptics, I don't believe anything I hear in the news now. I've been one who's been avoiding the news for 25 years. I studied the news when I was at UCLA, and I've been told by many professors and many, many experts, you cannot believe what you hear. You cannot believe what you see now. So the news is just what it is. You can listen to it if you chose to choose to. I would like to hear from the horse's mouth, but I, I think it's very broken. James, James Gingrich, what, what, so how, where, how do we fix this? Or is there a solution? I don't know that we can fix it. Uh, one of the problems that I see, I read a article today that in 1983, 90% of our media was owned by 50 corporations. And there was a lot of fear in the journalism industry at that time that that was too few. Well, fast forward to now, we're at six big conglomerates that own it all. I don't know how to fix it. We're divided. That's a whole topic in days and hours, but uh, it's going to continue to get worse if we keep collapsing who owns and controls the media. Let's go to our youngest, uh, Cruz. Where do you get your news from? Like, I would assume back in the day, most people got their news from the office and newspapers or the TV. Where does a 20 year old get his news from? Uh, primarily, I would say social media. I mean, no one my age has cable anymore unless it's YouTube TV. So you're not watching a ton of Fox News. Um, there are certain social media platforms at which I trust um, and so certain social media, I would say news stations at which I trust. And I kind of limit myself to those because I think that they are not producing stuff to get money like Fox and CNN would do. Um, I think that they're just trying to relay the information that they have and give it to the people. J Jimmy Mack, is, is, that, is that reality nowadays where Cruz is literally just picking and choosing certain things and he's saying, yes, this is what I'm getting. This is the information that I have. Yes, um, that's the reality today. You have to kind of do your own research to get the, the proper news. Um, it used to be a time where the news was non-biased. They just gave you the facts. And nowadays it's social programming. Um, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, they are socially programming people to um, have this trust for each other. And that's how they make money. They raise the headlines. They um, hyper sensationalize stories. They can hook people in and get you to watch their news source. Um, if you want to try to find some type of truth, you got to watch them all and then come to your own conclusions. Because um, on social media, you're going to have more people that's trying to do more investigative reporting. While these people are out there creating programs to get you hooked, you know, to, to get you to come and watch their television shows. They're already telling you the news before you even turn it on. They have the commercial. This is what we're going to be talking about tonight on CNN. Just to socially program you to turn in to, or tune in and then see what they got to say. I like that. I like that term, social program. I mean, I don't like it, but I like the fact you said it. Uh, Joe, where do you get your news from, my man, you, the, the, representing the 30s? I, uh, I have a pretty diverse news diet. I like to try to get as much of it in person as possible. Um, you know, local journalism in Philly is great. We have uh, The Citizen. We have The Philly Inquirer. Uh, we have a lot of local journalists that do a great job keeping people informed. But uh, 
I really rely on aggregators. You know, it's hard to get the full truth from any one point of view. So I really look to try to diversify where I'm looking at information to try to get as many people's eyes on it as possible. Cause then reading between the lines, you tend to find where the truth is. I think like the, the news media is just, it, we're in this really weird ecosystem where news media has turned into big business. Before it used to be speaking truth to power and local subscriptions, you know, the best stories sold. Uh, now we're in a media environment where the New York Times is publicly traded and they're competing in the market of attention with the most addictive thing ever created in TikTok. You know, uh, I think in some senses, news media isn't broken. It's in some ways better than it's ever been. What's broken is the ability for people to get access to it. The best news is behind a paywall. The shit news that just fulfills everyone's desires to see what they want to see or believe what they want to believe is available in 280 characters on demand. Um, so it's really, oh, wait, how do you cut through the bullshit with the truth? And whose truth is it that really matters? Well, and that, that's the thing that I wanted to touch on next is how, how do you cut through the BS? How, how do you even know? Because it, it, it's maybe it's just me, but ever since Trump came into power, I call him El Trump on for future reference. I'll talk to Joe about Joe Biden as Joey B. <clears throat> even just the, the simple things, how people are editing everything now, where Joey B's full campaign of why he was running for president in 2020 was because uh, one of the main things was El, El Trump said, there's many fine people in the, the, the Charlotte thing on the, on the left, or many, many fine people. They, they were talking about Nazis or something like that. And the, you could tell, I remember showing that clip to someone saying, you know, that's not what he said. And they, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, if you look, they cut the clip. It'd be like, I can't, I would totally kill AC right now. And then they cut it. But it, they, they, didn't, they cut out the photo. I would totally kill AC if he killed a puppy. And then they cut it right there. So going back to, let's AC, I'll talk to you. How do how does a human being even decipher what is real and what is fake? We won't even get into the AI talk yet. I'm just talking about clips and all this stuff. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an editor. I worked for for Fox for a few years back in Fox Sports News um, and uh, Fox Sports One. And as an editor, we're we, we just follow instructions, and we can edit information to fit what we want the narrative to be. And that's the scary part. Is, is not only our pictures edited to make someone look more appealing, but the news and facts can be skewed, can be cut out, can be massaged to tell the story any way you want to. So that's why I'm more, more of a, like, like Jimmy said, I need to find source upon source upon source to get my own revelation of what their actual facts might be. It's a sad thing when you can't even trust uh, uh, your, your favorite newscaster to bring you the truth. Yeah, because they, as, as AC said, or excuse me, as Jimmy Max said, they've been socially programmed. Bill Geyser, you've been reading or watching or learning about the news longer than all of us. Where do you get your news? And, and, and what about the editing is, issue? So the first question, where do I get my news? Um, first of all, I try to differentiate between news and entertainment. And that's part of the problem, I think, is that some of this stuff that we watch, we think is news. But as AC is saying, it's just a narrative um, that that fits a particular, usually it's a political uh, orientation. So people tend to drift. If they're liberal, there's a set of media that appeals to them, vice versa for conservative. Um, where I've been really trying to get more of my news these days is from independent journalists. And I'm using the term journalist in sort of the classic sense that they were trying to, they're truth seekers. They're trying to be objective, fair, balanced. Um, they're, they're, objective is not to spin a narrative, but to get to the bottom of, a, of an issue. And a lot of them are on Substack. And it's interesting, I, I went to see how Substack's paid subscriptions have increased year over year. And I got 22 versus 2021, it's up 400%. And I'm talking about some of the people like Matt Tabby, Barry Weiss, Alex Berenson. Um, there was one, two, let's see, the top four are, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. It's a fantastic one. Letters from an American. 
Um, it's an incredible blog on Substack. The Dispatch, TK News by Nat Tabby, Bulwark, and then Glenn, Glenn Greenwald. That's where I feel like I trust these people in a way that's similar to back in the day when it was Walter Cronkite and Hunkley Brinkley and people like yeah. that. When you had three networks for news, that's it. You know, today with social media and technology, everybody has become a reporter and an editor. And that's part, that's part of the problem. But then I'm, I'm gonna go to uh, Joe Nolan real quick. Then how do we know, how does Bill Geyser know that those four people on Substack, the five that he's reading, how does he know that those are real? How does he know that he's not getting pushed or do we have to just rely on our own intelligence? You know, I'm really glad you bring that up. Uh, I actually brought a clip uh, that I wanted to share that d dives into this a little bit. Ed, if you wouldn't mind uh, bringing that up. But yeah, it's just not even doing it consciously. It's because these companies like Twitter and uh, YouTube and Instagram, everything, they went public and they went to shareholders. So they have to grow. Their entire models are based off of growth. They cannot stay stagnant. YouTube, uh, Twitter grossed four or five billion dollars last year. It is in the red. It is unprofitable. It has to get more of you. That could be the ceiling for a place like this. YouTube, the ceiling could be three hours of engagement. No matter how nice it's trying to be, it is all that they're trying to get more engagement from you. We, the, we used to colonize land. That was the thing you could expand into. And that's where money was to be made. We colonized the entire earth. There was no other place for the businesses and capitalism to expand into. And then they realized human attention that we can now, they are now trying to colonize every minute of your life. That is what these people are trying to do. Every single free moment you have is a moment you could be looking at your phone and they could be gathering information to target ads at you. That that's what's happening. So like as much as we, 86% of people get most of their news from social media. These companies that are in this race to the bottom for human attention, you know, there's no room for the truth. Like Bill say, you really have to seek it out. It doesn't spread. And when you try to talk to people, you know, I, I'm not sure if Cruz uh, has had a similar experience, but every time I see people in their 30s, they're like, hey, did you see that show? Did you see this show? And I just say, no, I haven't. And they say it was great. I'm just like, I'm sure it was, but I'm probably never going to see it. Like if I go and talk about the same news event to people that saw it a different way, there's it's like we're talking about two different things. It might as well be different TV shows that have maybe the similar outline. It, you know, we're just we're not in a race of against news. We're in a race against attention. How do you get people interested in things that matter? I mean, we're we are in the middle of a hot war, the first one in Europe since 1945, and because the front line stalled for six weeks, it's out of the news again. Like we have an attention deficit problem and there's no room for people to find the truth. It's just who can grab the attention right now. Yeah, and, and Joe, that is a perfect, perfect segue. We're gonna go into our first commercial break, but we're gonna come right back to that. And Jimmy Mack, I'm coming to you. Ed, take us commercial, my man. Going right that way. Welcome back to Decades. My name is Chris Rubio. We've got Bill Geyser, James Gingrich, AC, Jimmy Mack, uh, Joe Nolan, and Cruz Rubio. Welcome back to Decades on NGBN.TV. Thanks for checking us out and sharing. Going right back to what Joe Nolan said, we're talking about how we've had this hot war in Europe, and basically our attention spans have gotten so fast or so short or so small, I don't even know what I've used, because I can't think because my attention span is so short right now, is that we can scroll zombies where everyone just scrolls, scroll, 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 scroll. And if something doesn't pop into your feed right away where you're interested in it, you're out. And even if it does pop in, you're still there for eight, nine, 10 seconds. I mean, how many of us have looked at a video on our social media feed? And if I see it's like over 30 seconds, I go, I'm out. Oh, yeah. I could be literally doing nothing, but it's like, well, I'm not sitting there for 30 seconds for the love of God. And if it doesn't have copies on it, then I'm double out. So, Jimmy Mack, how do we fix our attention span? Or do we just keep making videos shorter and shorter and shorter to where we become, you know, the, the, I can't think of that movie where everyone's just sitting blob and eating Del Taco the entire time. Wally. I've, I've evolved in social media. Um, when I first got into social media, I really thought it was media. You know, I thought every time somebody had something to post or say, especially if it was long, it was going to be informative. 
I end up seeing a lot of twerking videos and, you know, uh, girls in bikinis and <laughs> stuff like that. So, yes, it's, it has taken over our attention spans. I watched a young lady who does these funny cartoon dances for hours on end one time and marble racing and things like that. So it's whatever is grabbing our attention is what they're trying to do and trying to get people to um, classify themselves into certain areas. You have people who have no idea of current events. You have people who have all the current events. So as social media has, has given us something where we can branch out as individuals and be in our own world or in our own subgroup while we're out there. So it's not about grabbing your a short attention span. It's about grabbing your attention span to follow my videos or only follow what I do to get your mind off of what everybody else is doing. So, I mean, I really think what we've entered in is a an octopus of state sponsored media where we can find anything to sell people on and get them hooked on that and then you go off into your own little world um I, you can i mean me and ac do a podcast so we try to hit sports uh people mm -hmm. other people are trying to get the news or find out who what the left is doing or what the right is doing some people are comic books so it's all about what it is that they can get you hooked on to get you watching this for hours and hours and hours even if it isn't the news is something so that's what our attention spans are going to do we only care about what sparks an interest in us it's not about being a full-fledged human being participating in everything nobody's well there are still people who are out there that can consume a lot of things but there are people that only want to consume certain things that's why housewife okay. shows are big <laughs> okay so <laughs> i'm coming to you because you've been at some sort of an isolationist at times what, you know, what Jenny Max said was, you know, you've got your individuals and then you've got your people that you want to go with a group. Are, are we into the point in society right now where it, it's just that? Like you hang out with this bubble and I don't want to talk to this bubble or are there still people or is there still possibility to go out and reach to this other group? Or is that is it just done? Is it impossible? I don't think it's impossible. We're doing it today. I mean, here, if I summarize what we've heard so far, it's not breaking news. It's broken. So we have agreement from different backgrounds, different races, different parts of the country um fixing it is not going to be easy it's it's way broke um norman sullivan he's a journalist for the institute of public accuracy he said we're now at a stage where every journalist who isn't asleep understands that corporate power has made it impossible for them to do their job mm -hmm. that's to joe's point it, it's about money now the minute it became about money and they also decide what content you know is important what's relevant that used to be yeah there's lots of stuff you could post maybe the fix is call it entertainment you know, and then make the news just stick to facts. But, you know, that's government regulation. And I'm kind of against that. So <laughs> and it's funny you say that it's stick to entertainment because I was watching uh, a podcast where they were talking about that the show on ABC, The View. How it's basically the five ladies, mm -hmm. there, you know, giving out the news. And that's under ABC's or NBC's entertainment division. It's not under their news division. So that's how they kind of cover their ass a little bit. AC, what, what are your thoughts on that? Is it is, is the news bad? Number one, we've already talked about is it just entertainment? Remember when you were young and you were in the, uh, the supermarket with your mom and you saw those tabloids, magazines? Mm -hmm. That's what we get now <clears throat> on, on television, on social media. Yeah. We're getting sensationalized stories that probably aren't true, but it makes you stop and read about it. It makes you talk about it. It is, it's, it's addicting. Like people love smut. People love to hear lies. People hear to, love to hear controversy. I was talking to someone today. People are gluttons for punishment. They want to hear someone tell them the truth and, and tell them how they're doing something <clears throat> wrong and, and then become a victim. So it's just, it's so bad right now as far as getting our, I go to my father-in-law for my news. He's 87. He reads through all, he watched every single news outlet. He reads every single paper. And I say, dad, what's the truth? The truth is this son. And he'll let me, he'll let me have it. And I'm like, I, I'll take your word for it. Um, it's, it's so broken Rubes. I don't even know, you know, like, I feel bad. I don't think my son and my daughter even care about what's happening in the world because they know people have agendas, people have narratives, people want you to side with what they believe, no matter how, what it takes to get you to believe that. And, and it's just crazy it now I, I, I feel for the generation that is coming up. How are they going to get the truth if they have no discernment of, of, of character? And they don't have people that they can trust. It's a it's a tough situation, but I think this this show alone could be a first step to like like what James said. It's broken, but we have to find out. It's going to be hard to fix, but we have to okay. find a way. Okay, but what ha you made a good statement back there. You made a lot of good statements, but one that really caught me was 
there's a lot of people that don't know. And I have a couple friends that are like this where they know nothing. I mean, anything that's in the news, they know nothing about it. Like I can literally say, say, oh, what about, do you hear about this thing about Nancy Pelosi? Who? I'm like, dude, come on. Or, or like, what do you think about Ukraine? They're like, what? I'm like, where, where have you been? Have you been in a coma? My question to Cruz than Joe is, is that almost a better way to live? Because they, 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 you can't really, I guess you call them ignorant, yeah. but are they just, they're just floating through life seeing a butterfly and saying, hey, look at that butterfly. Cruz? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a phenomenal way to live. I mean, at the end of the day, like, what really, what implications does a lot of this stuff have, you know? I mean, obviously, gas prices, whatever, you know, there's a lot, I mean, there's some implications to what's going on across the country, but at the end of the day, what major implications do a lot of these things have on me? Nothing, I mean, what is Joe Biden falling down the plane going to do for me? You know, nothing. No, I, do I really care about it? No, but it's funny to look at from time to time. I mean, at the end of the day, there's not a lot much that's going to affect me, and I think that as people, we keep buying into it and keep clicking and keep, keep retweeting, quote tweeting, like tweeting to the point where we become addicted. And it's almost, yeah, it would be better for us just to disconnect and go live with the wolves. But I don't think it's unfortunately a reality for a lot of us. Joe, something like what Cruz just brought up where, you know, Joey B is falling down the stairs again for the second time, where someone on the left would look say, oh, he, you know, he's, he's 80 years old. Give him a break. What do you want? Where someone on the right would go, this is making us look weak, man. This is this is not good. So wh where's the middle line on that? Or do, do we just keep going in our packs? Do we, it's cruise or wolf packs. Joe? I think, you know, especially in that example, it's always going to be demonized by whether they're on your side or my side uh, on <clears throat> within the country, right? But, you know, regardless of our differences, you always project power abroad and, like, you know, seeing Biden walk through downtown Kiev while air sirens were blaring was a pretty strong sign of our commitment to, like, democracy against authoritarianism. Um, but beyond that, I mean, the new, I have a friend uh, who I was talking to about the Ukraine war, and she said to me, you know, I'm never going to make a difference. So I just haven't, I don't care. I just never bothered to jump into it. And is that healthy? Yeah, it is, honestly. I mean, you... We've never been in a position where you can choose your media environment more. I mean, my parents grew up with three, six, and 10. You had Eyewitness News, you had Action News, and you had NBC 10 News. And those were your sources of truth. They had the nightly news, they had the local news. Uh, was that a better media environment than today? Probably not. I mean, realistically, they got away with a ton more shit because there was no one that was keeping them accountable. You know, the truth is, big media companies get captured. They become small C conservative as they get bigger, because as you get bigger, you have more to lose, right? So if there's an explosive story and you have multiple sources on it, but uh, and it shows that Elon Musk is himself a trans woman uh, and you just, your editor kills it because you don't want to open <laughs> liabilities because the New York Times has $20 billion worth of real estate, right? But a citizen journalist now can go do that because you can't get blood from a stone. So in some ways, you know, it's never been easier to speak truth to power, but it's also, uh, you know, we're captured by large media conglomerates, like uh, James pointed out earlier, where there it's harder and harder to get them because, you know, like just like a forest where trees that already exist choke out new trees from growing. It's hard for new sites to grow up and get credibility when they just get bought or taken out by these legacy competitors. Bill Geiser, then we're gonna to go to commercial. Go ahead. Well, I would I would disagree with the uh, comment Joe just made about it's very difficult for new startups, say in this business to, to succeed. I mean, that's what technology does, is it knocks incumbents silly. But I think there's a big problem. It's it just, there's this culture of lying that goes on. And the U.S. mainstream media, call it the press. Bill froze. I think Joey B. Got him. 
call the press. I think the media got it. <laughs> uh, hey, this, you know what? This is a perfect little spot. Yeah. On a side note, you know what we need to do? We're, we're going to definitely make this show go live. Oh, Bill's back with us. We're there we go. Then. Welcome back, Bill. So we can <laughs> do I need to start over? That I want to talk about, but and I don't want to cut off a polite human being. Bill, you guys, you were just saying, I think, the press. Well, okay. So I think there's this culture of lying that's where the press and the government are sort of in, intermingled in this web of fabrications. The press likes to make shit up and turn it into a crisis, and politicians like to ride their trusted stallions in and save the day. And it goes on and on and on. The Russia hoax, the this hoax, the that hoax. And you know what? We're just gullible because we're sucking it all up, believing it's true. That's why I think we actually have a lot more power than we give ourselves credit for. Thing is, when you see a politician or you see a member of the press doing what you think is lying, you stop voting for them and stop watching. Because these days, you know what? Money still talks. And it will continue to talk. And we're not going to keep talking. Ed, take us to commercial. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Brian Jodis with Pick Up the Six Productions. Join us every week as we share stories with you about people who have gone above and beyond through service, purpose, and impact. We're talking with incredible people, including special operators like Navy SEALs, Green Berets, and combat controllers. We also get to know community leaders, endurance athletes, and people that will inspire you. I'm grateful to be part of this growing movement at NGBN.TV with you, and I look forward to seeing you at Pick Up the Six. We are back. My name is Chris Rubio. This is Decades. We have Bill, James, AC, Jimmy, Matt, Joe, and Cruz, and of course, Ed, our co-host. Let's lean right into what Bill Geyser just talked about with the government getting involved. Let's go to clip number uh, number four, Ed. Representative Elise Stefanik tweeted on 2923 where the FBI paid Twitter over. This, the Twitter files are just the tip of the iceberg because there's so much more. There was a corrupt revolving door at the highest levels between the FBI and Twitter. Look no further than Jim Baker, former general counsel at the FBI who helped unlawfully investigate Donald Trump in the 2016 election. Or look at Jim Comey's deputy chief of staff who became the director of strategy at Twitter. Isn't it true, according to the Twitter files, that there were so many FBI officials who then went to work at Twitter that that created their own Slack channel and crib sheet for onboarding? The Twitter files confirm that, correct? Correct. Are you aware, as the American people are aware, that according to polling, of the people that were made aware of the Hunter Biden laptop story, 53% would have changed their vote, including 61% of Democrats. This is the definition of election meddling, and it's the definition of election meddling by the FBI on behalf of Democrats paid for by the U.S. taxpayers. It's collusion, it's corruption, and it's unconstitutional. And none of it would have been found out had an Elon Musk not bought Twitter for $44 billion, which is a large chunk of change, but he basically did it to make it go back to a free speech platform. And this is all, you know, whenever there's a big election, you have your October surprises. And this was the big one for the Republicans that they had Hunter Biden's laptop. He left it. It's a you know, guy that always wears a Scottish little hat. He's got it head right on the wrong way, whatever. And he just left it there, left it there. And everyone on the right was reading the story, watching the story going, okay, this is kind of a big deal, man. There's this laptop that's got all these images and, you know, the, the, this evidence of this and that. And it just got buried. I mean, absolutely buried to where even NPR and the Associated Press, they put out little statements that we're not covering this because it's fake news. When they would cover literally anything else. And it was everyone on the right would say, what's going on? The left was like, there's nothing even happening here. What are you talking about? And then it comes out of these Twitter files go, coming out that the FBI paid $3.4 million to hush the story. That is wild. Okay, AC, comment. I, 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 <laughs> I say it again, man. Who can you trust? I mean, really? I mean, I mean, politicians? politicians? No. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm independent for a reason. I don't blue, red. I mean, I must just be green or gray because I can't trust yeah. anybody further than I can throw them when there's money to be made, there's power to be had. 
And, and it's just sad that we're at this state um, and we're looking for reasons to, to, to bash. We're looking for reasons to, to pick, to elect. But I'm just, my prayers are always a good person, a person that has a heart for people. I, and I can't ever get that. I always get somebody that's extreme this way, extreme that way. So it's, I don't know, man. I, I, I This is why I don't watch the news. It's exactly yeah. why I don't watch it. James, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah. Well, you don't know that that's a good story or not, because virtually everything starts with someone was destroyed or in trouble or the end of it. And it's all bullshit. Sorry. It, it's never the case. It never goes anywhere. I wanted to comment briefly on what Cruz said. I, I wish I could be the guy that take that pill and, you know, not care. But then, you know, is a Nord pipe stream. Maybe that's something we ought to watch the news about. Maybe that's something we should have to talk about. But you don't. You do have to wade through it. And I'll say one last thing to Joe. I use a news aggregator as well, news blur. And I pull in beads from everybody. And then you got to kind of sift through it and say, you know, my gut says this feels right. And you just take all the the headlines out of it. The headlines are the worst thing. Get rid of them. It's not, yeah. nobody was destroyed. Nothing happened. But you have to go through it. And I don't think he was the first person who said it, but Denzel Washington said, if you don't watch the news, you're uninformed. If you watch it, you're misinformed. And that's kind of where it lands. Joe, your response? I, I completely agree. Yeah, I think the the root of a good news culture is a well-educated population that can spot bullshit and see things that are outside of the trend of history because those are things that need incredible evidence in order to substantiate the incredible claim. Like Rubio, you just peddled absolute misinformation from Elise Stefanik. Like well, what, what was the Twitter, what was Twitter the used a very common uh, way to request reimbursement for legal expenses from the FBI. Guess what? It costs a lot of money for lawyers to review subpoenas and then to provide discovery. And the federal law says you're allowed to put in for reimbursement. That is because you shouldn't have to shoulder the expense of the federal government as a private company okay, when they're trying about, to use their enforcement. So the when we're talking about how the news is broken and then you're coming in with a story that is inflammatory and wrong, it's just what like about them the hiding crazy story, idea. Thing. What, that's what I'm saying, though. I'm saying go back to the October surprise where everyone on one side was like, dude, you, this is obviously true. And then, every, then it just, and then all of a sudden, three years later, when we're two and a half years into Joey B's term, it's like, Oh, the New York Post just posted, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Hey, yeah, by the way, that Hunter uh, Biden thing, yeah, that's 100% true. I mean, it, it goes back to we're going to go to, and then there's no consequences to it. That's my point. So, Ed, can you give me clip two, the Bill Maher clip real quick? Love Bill Maher. still in the paper today. Kind of a big story, I think. I wonder how much it's going to get covered in the liberal media because it's about how natural immunity, they did a giant study, 65 countries, or maybe – something like 65 countries, many, many different studies. They looked at them all. Natural immunity, as good or better than the vaccine. Something I've been saying since the beginning, and I get called an anti-vaxxer. That's not an anti-vaxxer. This is the kind of thing, I, you know, my problem with the media from both sides is not that you, you guys lie. It's that you tell me your side of the story that you want me to know. You don't tell me the whole story. I'd be curious as to how much play this story gets, because... I, I remember reading that they did a study of Republicans versus Democrats. The question was, what percentage, this is like a year and a half ago, what percentage of people who get COVID require hospitalization? The answer is less than 1%. Almost half of Democrats thought it was over 50%. They listened to your network. Where do they get that kind of information? That was you to you. To that was no, clear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. that, think, that's no, bad I... information they have in their head, and it's from one side. Now, that, that clip is telling for a couple of different reasons. Obviously, Bill Mars, he's, he's, well, Joe, you agree with me? He's middle left, maybe a little bit more left. I think he's the biggest asshole on TV. Okay. That, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, be right, left, he turned on you, huh, like, Joe? Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> he's, he's, I've never liked him. Like, yeah, he's just, he's so yeah. he, is so far removed from the people he thinks he speaks for. He's made $50 million a year for the last 20 years and still yeah. thinks he thought for a common dude. He's just <laughs> another catch, captured liberal on the East Coast who's really a conservative. But what, my, what I'm saying is, the, the thing about that clip, I think the lies in the media, when El Trumpo became president, it really just ramped it up. They went to like a level 10. I mean, you, you could see one article where it says, 
Trump can't swim. And then on the other one was because he could walk on water. And it was like, yeah, that's why he can't swim. You know, he can walk on water. And it's like, what's happening here? And then when the Rona came about, that's when it went, uh, the news media went from like, you know, fear cells. It was, whoa, like this. And the part of that clip that bothers me the most it's not even over the fact that over 50% of Democrats thought this and, oh, my God, Rona, we're going to die. This is going to happen. It's at the very end when he says, they're getting it from your news station. What do you say? And they just, ha ah, Hey, okay. Jimmy Mack, what's your thoughts? Well, um, I used to be like James. I used to love Bill Maher. And then I got like Joe. I think he's kind of a narcissist. I think he tried to speak back into opinion. But when it comes to, I think you got to add context to it. Where you said, where he said that, um, 50% of Democrats thought that, you know, that everybody got hospitalized for Rona. I think because of the headlines in the media and constantly seeing hospitalizations, hospitals are full and stuff like that. And then not knowing anybody that had the coronavirus, he was thinking like, oh, my God, this must be a lot of people going um, to the hospital because it seems like every headline, every news source has hospitals are full. No beds, no nothing like that. So if you don't know people with coronavirus and then you're seeing that, you're probably thinking, oh, man, it's a 100 percent rate that I'm going to be in, inside of that. So I don't think they're really asking people, why do you think that? They're just saying, hey, do you think that, you know, with, with polling? Because, you know, I get called for polls all the time for both sides, left and right, because I'm independent. So I'll get the calls. Hey, what do you think of this and that? They're not asking in-depth questions about why do you think that? They're just saying yes, no, maybe strongly agree, strongly disagree. So I think some of these polls are inaccurate because they're not asking depth of knowledge questions. You know, um, you get somebody with uh, who dropped out of junior college, they're not probably going to know much about nothing or probably isn't going to be able to consume much nothing. Whoa. Say, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I dropped out of junior college. <laughs> Damn you, Jimmy Mack. <laughs> They're, no, this is just, just an example. So oh. they don't care. They don't care too much. About uh -huh. much. If they don't care too much about consuming much. They're not going to know too much. They're just going to read headlines. Nothing against people with junior college degrees. Nothing like that are even dropped out. It's about <laughs> enlightening yourself. And I think a lot of people don't enlighten themselves no matter mm -hmm. what it is. So that's why they were getting caught up in that. Oh, 100 percent of people are in the hospital. When I caught coronavirus, I was in the room for two, two, um, two weeks get treated like a prisoner kid, sliding water and bread under the door. So I, I understand like, no, you're not. So if you never experienced that or you don't know people that experience, of course, your thoughts are going to be like whatever media outlet is telling me what's going on at these hospitals. That's what I, that's what I believe in. Okay. But see, that's, that's my point though. You're leading right into my point of what you watch on TV tells you, oh my God, like we're at your house, they're throwing you trays under the thing, like your Shawshank. And you're getting your food from red, basically, at all. In my house, if anyone had it, it'd be like, cool, high five, give me a hug. And, it, <laughs> and life went on. It was because I, I spoke to different people. I spoke to doctors. I spoke to policemen. I spoke to nurses. I spoke to uh, cops that were in the L.A. area where all the hospitals were, you know, overwhelming. Them. And he's like, I, I'm doing the, the runs on these and I'm not seeing it. So what's happening here? And then when, you know, you had certain news stations that had, what was it, the death counter? And it was just like the, the, the stock mark ticker. And I was like. What is, what's happening here? And then all of a sudden, like at one point, the media decided Joey B gets in, death counter, eh, we'll move that cry on. We don't need that anymore. And th that's where I just don't, I, I, I want to know, is it is it impossible to make generations come together like we're doing on the show? Right, right now we're talking it out. It's fantastic. We're all going to talk. We're going to agree to disagree. That's wonderful. Or we can agree to agree. I don't give two craps. But what I'm saying is I almost think it's impossible to have other generations come together and agree to disagree or just even listen. Are we are we past the point of listening? That's the, the, we're going to come back to that right after this commercial. Hi, my name is Harvey Laguerre, host of Men of the Prize here on NGBN. On this show, Black men discuss our unique struggles, what we've gone through to become the men that we are today. And we do it in a safe space. So if you want to see Black men discussing our unique issues, give us a try. And if you want to tell us about your unique struggles, get on here and tell us all about it. Talking is the key. My name is Harvey, and you are the man, and you are the prize. Now back to the show. So what brings me back to my question of, can we come together and speak or is it impossible because i i have a, a twitter or excuse me text thread with a group that i send some information out 
and it's if I had any hair, I'd pull it out because they, 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 sometimes they just won't listen. And if, am I highly intelligent where I'm have the ability to listen, or are we or are we past that, Jim? And then I got Bill. You want to meet? I don't know. I, that's a question that I can't answer. I, I like to listen to things. I, I was excited about the show because I knew I was going to get exposed to different people, different parts of the country. To me, uh, just to dig on Jimmy McAbeth, the intelligence uh, <laughs> and uh, education is, is a process where you ingest things and then you talk to people and you become something else. Uh, college just didn't work for me real well, but uh, and I did fine. But I, I don't know that we can get around it. it it's tough. The, the things like this hopefully help it. I worry more about Cruz, even Joe's generation, because they're going to get that. Let's take the blue pill. F it. I don't want to listen to this shit. It has, doesn't make any sense. It's not affecting me until suddenly we got troops on the ground in Ukraine. Then there's something to talk about. Like, oh, how'd that happen? Well, it, it's there. You had to dig through, you know, this star getting married and whatever the hell else you're <laughs> watching. But, you know, it's there. That info's out there. So I would say just keep trying. Bill Geyser? You know what? I think you're a lot better off. Uh, watching what these people do versus listen to what they have to say. It's kind of like that old Yogi Berra saying, you can observe a lot by watching. Going back to the uh, pandemic thing early on, you know, with all the fear mongering and stuff out there, it was concerning. But what I focused on were these people like Gavin Newsom at the French Laundry. And that's when I knew something else was going on here. So when you see these leaders who on one hand are trying to scare you just out of your wits, and when you're, when supposedly when people aren't looking, they're out partying like it's 1999, that's to me the real telling blow here. And so that's why I'm saying, I'd like to watch what these guys are doing and, and I, I put a lot less emphasis on, on what they're saying. So, AC, what are you going to do when father-in-law passes? I'll have to be the person in my family that does what he did and re re-educate my family and my people that look up to me, whether it be my students or my student athletes or the kids I work with at the church, is is find a way to disseminate information to find the truth and not lead yourself into a, a fear-mongering situation. Because what's going to sell to the test of time is sex and fear. And if, if, if there are advertisements to be sold and money to be made and, and, and votes to gain, there's one way to do that. And that's by creating uh, a, a divide, creating separation amongst who's with the breads, who's with the blues or whatever it might be. That's why an independent president can't win because everybody wants to pick a side that wins. And it's just, it's a sad place we are or in, but at the same time, who's going to be the man and to tell the truth to the people when it's not popular? Or, or the woman, it's 2023 AC. Hey, uh, he man, woman haters club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and we'll allow you to speak, go ahead. Because, <laughs> thank you, Rubio, and no, I, I figured just sitting here. No, I, I think to your point <clears throat> and what you've been saying is, I, I think it's going to be a struggle because we need the younger, the 20s and 30s, the Joe and the Cruises of the world to listen to multiple different facets. And I think they get in their one-way thinking habit. And it's not a knock on them. It's just, it's kind of how they were brought up and they don't. And they they want to be with the in crowd. They want to do the, the in thing and they want to do what, what's there and now. It's not, it's not that they, they need more of this kind of environment where they are open and will at least, like Jim said, Gingrich, you need to listen to everybody's opinion and kind of go from there. And and not to back Cruz and Joe, and I'm, I'm going to get to you, Jimmy Mack, then Joe, but it's one of those things. Yes, you can tell their generation, okay, you guys are young. You need to start opening up your mind, blah, blah, blah. How many 60, 70, and 80-year-olds just read the paper? And then whatever's in the paper, that's what they get. I mean, I was just looking at my local paper about a week ago, and I was looking through just uh, for curiosity. There wasn't one thing in about um, I'm gonna, Palestine, Ohio, the, the trail derailment. I was like, not right. one thing. And I'm like, that's kind of a big deal, especially if you're there. Um, and so, it's yes, we can yell at the younger generation. Of, okay, you guys, be more vocal. Speak to the older people. But older people, yet again, I hate to pat yeah. myself on the back here, but that's why this damn show is created. Be careful. Do this over yeah. and over and over throughout the country. 
I think it'd be great. Go ahead, Cruz. Yeah, just kind of jumping on that a little bit. I would say that, especially with my generation, Joe's generation, I think we're very selective about what we care about, um, specifically amongst like college age students, myself, and when it comes to social media, very big thing is for kids to just repost something on their Instagram story and all of a sudden that problem gets solved. Um, especially, I would say, not to bat anyone in particular, but college age women my age, they come up with these very decorative and very girly and fun pink and hot purple thing and it's about, you know, some something, some rights issue and they try to make it as like, insight like visually appealing as possible for you to see that but it doesn't show some of the true problems that are going on right now such as you know the gas or leak whatever it was in ohio but instead they're worrying about little bs things that are going on okay jimmy mac well just to touch on what ed said we want people who have singular thought and single-minded and single agendas because people who have free thought and have multiple ideas going through their head they create revolutionary change why would we want free thinkers that's why i call it social programming we don't want people to freely think we want to give you your opinion we want to give you our side of the story and let you champion that not champion what it is that you know that would be a good idea like when we and just to bring this in like when we talked about changing the police nobody really wants to hear any idea about policing they just want to throw out, oh, this is what they should do to fund the police, stuff like that. All that was a crock of mess. They want you to think singular because if you come up with a good idea, they don't want that because once again, that's arts revolutionary change. That's the change that the people would really want, but they're gonna hush that. They want you to think singular and that's why education is, but that's a different topic. That's why education is the way it is. So we can keep people on singular thoughts and singular paths just to join in with the rest of the zombies. Joe, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I got a, I got a couple quotes for you, Rubio, from a, a book. Um, so it was called uh, The Society of the Spectacle, right? Spectacle is the sun that never sets over the modern empire of passivity. This society eliminates geographic distance only to produce a new internal separa separation where the real world changes into simple images the simple images become real beings and effective motivations of hypnotic behavior. That was written in 1967 in post Vichy France that was dealing with broadcast TV and radio for the first time and how that was changing politics. Uh, the gist of the book is that society went from uh, an individual being, from being into having and from having into appearing uh, and at this point, we are so far into the spectacle that it's all that matters. You know, it doesn't matter what the truth is. People don't know what their neighbors' names are half the time. You know, the truth is people are more focused on the narrative and the spectacle and how they're perceived online than they are with the society that they're a part of. So I think, you know, news is more of like a canary in the coal mine of a society that's broken and just looking for the lowest common denominator. And that goes back to what Cruz was just saying about the whole me first attitude. We're going to go to commercial, our last commercial on that note, and we're going to come back for our final segment. Ed, take us away. Hello, my name's Ian Hill. And when I'm not training to be the oldest man to play NCAA Division One college football, I'm the CEO of NGBN TV. Our mission is pretty simple. Educate, equip, entertain, support, and inspire men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. It's a one-stop shop for all that a man in his middle ages needs to be his best. So won't you come and join us? Come and be a part of NGBN TV. Now back to our show. Welcome back to Decades. My name is Chris Rubio. We've got Bill Geiser, James Gingrich, AC, Jimmy Mack, Joe Nolan, and Cruz Rubio. Well, this is the final segment. We're going to bring it all home. All of you, you have 15 seconds. No more, Jimmy Mack, you long-winded man. Okay? But I love you for it because I want to do the same thing. You got 15 seconds. Bring it, or 15 to 20 seconds. I'll give you a little bit more. But Bill Geiser, you start us off. Just what? give us a wrap on something. Hey, you know what I'd say if you find a news program you like, you enjoy it, pay for it if you can. As I said before, money talks. James? Hold on, James, you're on mute. And you're the tech guy, too, for the love of God. <laughs> hey, simmer down. I would say uh, tune out the entertainment. We kind of define something that hasn't been talked about a lot. If 
Fox, CNN, that's entertainment. Find your news elsewhere, read a lot of it, come up with your own opinion, or meet AC's grandpa. It sounds like a plan for me. <laughs> AC? <laughs> yeah, research, man. Don't just listen to one source. Be a seeker of truth. Don't just be a zombie listening to anything anybody says. Interact. Uh, common sense with your listening. I know a lot of people want to dig their trenches and, and, and be one sided and stuff, but listen and use your common sense when you're listening to people. That's how you're going to get the best truth out of any type of news source or any type of source you're getting any information from. Joe Nolan. I think just make sure you treat everyone you talk to in person with respect and treat everything you hear coming out of a screen with suspicion. Oh, I like that. I like hey, hate to give you a compliment, Joe, but that was a good one. <laughs> uh, Cruz. That's good. Uh, feel free to take a break from everything. Don't be afraid to go out into nature, whether it's a beach, mountain, forest, whatever it be, and just have some uh, alone time with yourself and gather your thoughts and recoup sometimes. That's the, Aaron Rodgers, that's the Aaron Rodgers way. I was just going to go to the yeah. so Wow. Yeah, that's so my, my final wrap on this would be just as the show was created, just as I wanted to want this show to do, my suggestion is homework for everyone watching. Try to find someone you normally would not talk to, not in your same little bubble, not in your vortex of anger, and just try to have a conversation with them. You agree with this? Please tell me why you agree with that. And just try to listen. Like Joe said, be nice, be kind, be respectful. Don't just immediately put them off to you're an idiot. Here's the reason why you're an idiot. You can think yourself they're an idiot, but listen to them. Just listen. Ed, you have one final statement. One final statement, just along all those same lines, exactly what you were saying. You know, open your mind to other ideas and other ways of finding your information and news, and then pull it all together and make and come to your own decision based on what you hear, what you see, and what you read. And that'll, you know help this whole thing move forward. Gentlemen, this was phenomenal. Everyone, cheers. Cheers, cheers. gentlemen. Good to see you, so Jens. This is Dex